Welcome to our third video. This time we are going to the Great Aussie Beer Shed. Okay, this is arriving at the Great Aussie something or other. The Great Aussie Beer Shed. This is the great Aussie beer shed. I've never seen anything like it. Even the ceiling. That shell pump on the left is not dissimilar to one that uh, the petrol station around the corner from my parents' place. Okay, welcome folks, thank you very much for coming. Uh, uh, Neil Thomas is my name. The entire complex, we call it a complex now because there's so many parts to it, is one man's collection, mine. 45 years of collecting. There's in excess of 20,000 beer cans more in the world, empty, uh, than everything else is Aussie. I've got to tell you, I've nearly given up on the can collecting. Why? I'm, I'm in the Becker Club. However, um, last year, sorry, I'll go back one. Uh, the year before, they put out 900 boutique beer cans in Australia. 900. Somebody yeah, last year. Club. That was two years ago. Last year, because it's a club and they got the magazine, they put it out. 1900 last year. Oh. So, how do you keep up with that? And they're Been not drinking. even beer. Yeah, because you know what they say? Right? Beer with melon. Mm -hmm. I haven't said it, right? Beer with strawberries. Beer with all this sort of stuff. So, who puts strawberries in beer? <laughs> no one. That's <laughs> not <laughs> beer. <laughs> There's a big row along here, guys. Come and join along here. We're just waiting for you guys to start the tour. Oh, So I'm going to tell you quickly, while I'm waiting to get them in the door now, how did a man start collecting all his stuff? It wasn't just a fluke. What happened was, it was a chance meeting. Back in the 70s, um, I was going to have this beautiful young girl, and she was uh, living in Adelaide. A bit like you, honey. We were both younger then, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and um, she uh, lived in Adelaide, I'm in Melbourne. I had my first house in Melbourne. And all you young ones are going to hate this. I paid 6,000 block of land in Melbourne, but I didn't build on it, because I got a house and land for 30. But guess what? In one lifetime, now I pay eight and a half thousand dollars a year rates on this place here. So I paid more in rates in one year than I paid for a block of land when I first started out. So there you go. But my mum gave me advice. She said, who's going to pay off that $30,000 mortgage? But I only earn 45 bucks a week. And so she said, you need life insurance. The AMP rep came to the door. You blokes come down here, they're your girls sitting down here. Okay, the AMP rep came to the door, signed me up, we had a beer, and he said, you collect beer cans? I said, no, up there, he's on your bar. I said, oh yeah, he said, I'm in a beer can collecting club. He said, it's fantastic, I mean, once a month on a Sunday, have a bar, we give a few beers, and a swap. He, so he took me down to Geelong, the president was there, his name was Sam Newman from Geelong, but it wasn't, <laughs> the, it wasn't the Sam Newman, how's the odds of that? And I joined the club. Within five years, I was president of Victoria, and within five years after that, president of Australia. So that's how I started collecting. So, um, 20 odd years ago, I did have one of the biggest beer collections in Australia, because I know it was through the clubs. So I had a dream to do a museum, so I've done it. So I won't die in that wooden box and uh, say I didn't try. So I love showing people stuff. Weekends like this is really good for us, but I can tell you the winter we sit here all day for no one. That's why we're now shut for two months of the year in the, uh, in the winter, okay? So follow me with your eyes, folks. I'm gonna go across that way around there and show you some lovely bits of Australian history. Then we'll come back to here, two stories to the first floor. Then to conclude the tour, I'm going to show you some of the big ones. So let's start here. That one tells you the service motor cars, the newest car in there. That's the E.H. Holden, 1963, 1964. That one there's a petrol bowser made by Epex, Burgess Bridge, Melbourne, 1910. You bump backwards and forwards, one gallon in the side, nose of the car, hit the lever, gravity V, pulls out. I need someone tall and clever. Okay, please. <laughs> Can you read for everyone? Where's that one made? Good girl. Top line, far right, what's the last two numbers? On the top line there, the far, far right, what's the last two numbers? 18. Patent Australia in 1918. And in your big voice, honey, you're in high school now. 
Can you read all of the um, countries we sent our Aussie bows to? New Zealand, Great Britain, 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 South Africa, France, and England. Give us a five-minute top of the Give a round of applause. Yeah. And they're really going good. Okay. So that's how it worked. Um, you press the button, choose your gallons, punt backwards and forwards, nods in the car, pick the lever, gravity B, hand it to bring your door around, put a padlock on, go home. The young mate over here, you've worked hard all day. You get home to work, you open the front door, what's the first thing you'll do? Drop a beer. Get a beer, good man, <laughs> but don't forget to kiss the lovely bride too, okay? Hey, married yet? No. no! Wedding's in the beer shed, honey, we do them. We've already got four more booked in later in the year. Okay. <laughs> that one. I well, don't laugh. They want to get married. I'm sure. Okay. This because you're old and cynical now. <laughs> and you know you do have to get married eventually. You know why? Because you can't see out your wife. No, all the jokes are that good, are they? Okay. That one looks like a rabbit chariot, so it's called a chariot. Now I need a pretty girl to help me. Next year would that be? Come on. <laughs> 1906, the date's on here. That's a luxury item off the farm, 115 years ago. What's it used for? Have a guess. Yeah. Of course. Guess. guess. Someone have a guess. <laughs> making beer, I like your thinking, mate. No, but it's not for making wine or, 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 or you know, proper liquor, like still. No. Okay, honey. How's your reading in school? Pretty good? Yeah. Down here. Can you read the top line? What's it say? Good girl, light of Australia. You won't get much more Aussie than that. The second line says safety. Safety air gas. Give us a five minute. She's doing a great job. When I asked the kids, give her, who was the healthy, she put her hands back up. She's a good girl. Well done. Okay, this is a gas producing unit. This is prior electricity on the farm, gas lighting. You made your own gas from a thing called carbide. You throw carbide at the top. You turn the handle around, you crush it. You pour water in the funnel here and the gas comes straight off that line there. More of a quid, more money. Steam engine in the front, belt driven off the roller. Yeah, did I have another little hopper down there? <laughs> Hello! Come and see Neil, come up here, bring your ice cream, it's all right. <laughs> it's fun! Come on! Come with mummy then. Okay, it doesn't matter then. John, expert up here. <laughs> come and turn the handle, Neil. Round and round circles. Well done. Now in a big voice, tell everyone, what are you making? Butter. Butter! Give a round of applause. Well done. Okay. That's a butter working table. That's a butter churn. That's a blacksmith's forge printing up your coals and making your horseshoes. That's your first fridge in Australia. What's it called? Meat safe. The meat safe? Who said that? Meat safe, yeah. Meat safe. Oh God, you honey, you are good. I don't think she's half old. Well done, love. Okay, it was commonly known as a meat safe, but it was originally named after a town in WA. What was it called? Whirlpool. Cool the Whirlpool, get out of here. Coolgardie. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. That's the Coolgardie safe. Fill the dish with water, wet the hessian bag, lay it over the side and the wind blows through. It works hatch. just like your evaporative cooling today. Ice chest on the end. They're going to say something in Melbourne, Melbourne, Sydney, but that is the daddy of them all. That's had a Flemington race course for 160 years. The Melbourne Cups are in every year. About 18 months ago, they put a vault in when they built the new grandstand. They didn't need the safe anymore. Had to have a little museum. Mine. <laughs> My two little pretty helpers up the front here. And I won't call you pretty. Five young guns in a row up here too. You're all going to play an old-fashioned poker machine. You're all too young to play one before. The young ones go last. Okay. Now, don't play poker machines because you'll lose your money. Good advice? Absolutely. That is so old, that's the pressure of the 30s. Runs on tokens, not money. That runs on six which is five cents. And that's the one I'm measures. No matter what order you're in, start up here, mate, pull the handle. Right down. Have a look at Watch it spin. A jack and a ten is really bad. Loser! Get out of here! I yell, loser, and don't play poker machines. Go on, mate. Have a crack. Cut the arm. No, get out of here, loser! Come on, honey. See if I'm lucky. Wait, Not so bad. Girls, fine. Okay. Come on, honey! No.
beer with Sheila's on it, almost pornographic. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, there's more. Some of those shells are a bit of all right, too. Oh. So the Japanese can even do beer in a kitschy form. Okie doke, we're just going to do a quick walkthrough because there is so much stuff in here. It's quite incredible. I could spend weeks going through this. You know, beer spigots, steins, cans from just about everywhere. Um, he's oh, I've already it. seen it. I've already done the tour. Yeah. This is particularly interesting. This was what he was talking about. How he was given this beautiful. Carlton uh, Dray. Uh, I'll just go down this one. There's just way too much stuff. That looks to be American. Back here, Guinness cigarette lighters. Lovely collection of named glasses. Okay, that'll do. 